Tomorrow I fly to Los Angeles, tomorrow morning, to do the last voiceovers of the last episode, which is not yet delivered to Fox. And that will basically sort of complete uh, all that I can do for the series. There's still some amazing things that happen, music and the like. We have uh, Alan Sylvester, which is in the score for Cosmos. And so uh, I'm, I'm like totally tired. <laughs> I'm ready to just go to the Bahamas, right? just so you know. <laughs> you know about that. Uh, how many of you are coming? I'm giving a talk later, but you're not coming to that talk. Okay, there's not, it's not a big room. Like, hold, like 400 people or something. Students aren't allowed. Students aren't allowed. Okay, so just us. we got to make the most of this thing. All right. So, one of my big concerns bringing science to the public is when I encounter profound science illiteracy. I mean, it's embarrassing as a nation. I occasionally tweet about this, you know. What I like to do is imagining an alien comes, and I have to explain to the alien stuff we're doing. Like I say to the alien, yes, but we fight wars and kill one another to pull oil out of the ground, and then we burn it. <laughs> That drives our civilization. The alien would be laughing and say, "What? Well, don't you know that the universe has limitless energy?" <laughs> yes. <laughs> Some of us know that, and it would just be embarrassing. I look at all the things we do here on Earth, and I don't know what the future of our civilization is. Part of what Cosmos is trying to do is like slap people in the face. You're taking pictures of me slapping her. Just trying to slap. Let me get some big burly. There you go. I'll slap you. There you go. Yeah, but people see how burly you are. There you go. Yeah. Good. So, it's a sort of a wake up call that if we don't do something now, who knows where this country will be in the very few years ahead, sliding backwards to cultural, economic, and geopolitical irrelevance on the world stage. Now, we should use this occasion because we're kind of, we're together here. You're students, I, I'm who I am. You can ask me questions that would be completely inappropriate in a public setting. This <laughs> <laughs> would be a good occasion to do that, okay? So we have a question in front of our yeah. um, Recently, I read some alarming statistics about 40% of Americans favor um, creationism over evolution, which I think is a little bit disheartening. What can we do as a society to move away from that and make sure that people still are able to hold maybe their own beliefs but also accept that they need to move away from that? Uh, yeah, it depends. You know, it's a free country. So I don't want to tell you what to believe and what not to believe. Because that's kind of the essence of a free country. You can think whatever you want. But as an educator, it's my duty to alert you of the consequences of thinking one way versus another. So if you want to say that the God that you worship created the universe in six days, 6,000 years ago, go right ahead. But if you now take that information and put it in a science classroom and call it science, that will have irreversible ramifications on the economic health of your nation. This is information I share with you, then I go home. I'm not going to beat you on the head. I'm not, gonna, I'm not trying to change how you think, who you worship, what you feel. I'm giving you an if-then statement that you then decide how you want to react.